Hey there, fellows. Today I'm going to be experimenting with this here lovely automobile. We'll be conducting a rather interesting experiment in this episode, though it is quite suspect. But for starters, let's remove the valve cover on this engine and have a look. Will this engine even do it for us? And from there I'll fill you guys in on the details. Let's do this. So have I got some good news for you fellows. Some cool new merch available on our website. Like for example these sweet signature hoodies. And the good news doesn't end there. The first 25 people to order these hoodies, we'll be offering them a 25% discount. And don't forget that there's a bunch of other stuff that you can order on our website. T-shirts, baseball caps, mugs document holders. And we're offering some generous discounts on the entire lineup. And on top of any order you make, we'll throw in one of these stickers on the house. Don't miss your chance to get some merch at discount prices. Hit the link in the video description and grab yourself something. Can dishwashing liquid clean out an engine? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So check this out. After removing the valve cover, now we can clearly see that this motor is very much 107% suitable for what we're going to be trying to do here. What's the experiment all about? Well, I saw a couple of videos. I was really keen to take a look and have a laugh. In Villa Rebo, the festivities continue, while in Villa Baggio, they're still washing their dishes. Very a magical remedy for dirty dishes. So right here I've got myself a fantastic dishwashing liquid, which you can also use to wash your hands in the garage when you've got them oily. Now it's great for cleaning off oil and grease. Okay, so I saw this video where a dude went like... See that? This is fairy, not oil. Oil does not get this thick. He's like, my engine seems to be acting up. But we can fix that and he pours in some fairy. In which case it's not a great idea to smash the gas or drive around, given that you can easily destroy the motor. Okay, let's go ahead and slap that valve cover back on. Then we start the motor and listen to determine how it runs. After that we pour some of this in. Start the engine, warm it up, give it a good clean. And afterwards, we're gonna open it again and see how well this works. And does it even. And we are ready. But we'll be going by the book. Boss told us that the engine has to be warm. We just brought the car in, and so right now it's barely even warm. But we'll fix that and listen to it while it's running. Let it rip. Well, it runs. For such an engine with so many kilometers and in this sort of condition, it's all right. Give it some throttle. Well, what can I say? The camshaft might be making a bit of noise. But that's about it. We've got the engine warmed up, everything's good. Removing the filler cap. And immediately we see... Smoke or is that steam? I'm gonna go right ahead and unscrew this cap from the bottle. Okay, now we... Feed this stuff into the motor. There we are. It's hot in there and we're doing this properly, so it all should... Well, it should get all runny when it's heated up. And indeed that is happening, look at that. Nice, that should do. Now we seal it up. And I mean both the engine and the bottle. Okay, let's start the motor and allow it to run for a while. We'll keep it at idle as we're meant to. Let's do this. And we'll have a look in half an hour. Okay, so the car has been running for 50 minutes with dishwashing liquid inside the engine. Now we're gonna let it cool off, drop the oil, replace that with some fresh oil, fire up the engine, listen to how it runs, hopefully like clockwork. And then we remove the valve cover and have a look inside. Alright, let's do this. Well, it wasn't very clean to begin with. 
but now it's super dirty. I don't see any foam or emulsion. The smell? I don't know. It smells not like pine trees by any chance. Like gasoline and cleaning products. It's an interesting smell. We'll let it drip. We've changed the oil, it's all good. And now it's time for us to start the car. Now it's quick to start. Now look here. What if... It's running at really low revs. Overall, it seems to have worked somewhat, and the engine is running better. It's not as rough. Fantastic. It's pretty quiet. No knocking, clanking, or any other sort of noise. However, we do need to remove that valve cover and see just how good a job the ferry did washing the innards. The upper part of the cylinder head, the cams and all of that. And now the moment of truth. Let's just carefully pluck this valve cover. There we are. There we are indeed. What do we see? That nothing has changed. You've still got all of that residue, it doesn't look much different. And so that's where we are with this experiment. Why didn't it work as advertised? It might have cleaned something off, but even if it did, we definitely can't see it. In one of those videos, I saw a guy pour in some ferry, let the car run, then he replaced the oil, and his hydraulic tappets started making noise. So we're all grown-ups here, right? I think we all know what's going on here. Now look, oil has a certain service life, right? Some of it burns away, it gets contaminated with gasoline, and sometimes older deposits find their way in. Given that modern motor oils contain additives that help clean the engine and prevent the deposits from accumulating. Here's where I'm going with this. Let me tell you about... Now you see, I have a buddy who doesn't even check the odometer to see when he's due for an oil change. As soon as a couple of tappets start ticking, that's the signal for him to go buy some fresh oil. And when he is keeping track of the numbers on the odometer, he sees that this usually occurs after about six to six and a half grand. After he replaces the oil, the tappets fill up and go completely silent. They completely cease to make any sort of unpleasant noises. In my humble opinion, hydraulic tappets are the earliest sort of signal, if you will. When they start making noise, that immediately becomes apparent, letting you know it's time to go to the shop. So there. I've covered the hydraulic tappet aspect. As for the dishwashing liquid and its cleaning properties, well, guys, you saw that everything was covered in deposits before we poured it in and is just as dirty afterwards. The residue is still very much there. So half a bottle didn't really do much. Now, anybody else would have already stopped at this point. But I suggest we try another experiment. And so here's what we'll be doing. I've got... A bunch of stuff here that I found lying around in the garage. I've got a metal slab, which is rather thick and smooth. And here's another piece of metal, which we're gonna place like so. Then we got this bit, essentially a pulley, which should make this all the more amusing, in keeping with the automotive theme. So we'll begin by checking how it's gonna slide on a dry surface. Two and a half kilos. So that's without any sort of lubricant, oil or otherwise. Now let's apply a bit of motor oil to this slab and see what happens. Two and a half kilos. Okay, here we go. 
And now it's got a mind of its own. So on an oily surface, you'd have seen that the friction almost completely disappears underneath this object. You've got a nice oil film, and it literally goes wherever it wants to. All you need to do is give it a push. You don't even need to keep pushing it. The table is slightly tilted, and it's moving all by itself. That's what an oil film does. Now let's see what happens when using Ferry. Will it decrease friction? It does make your hands pretty slippery. Let's try that again. This is starting to get interesting. It is down slightly, but when I begin to make some jerky movements, I can't do this by hand. As soon as it stops, it starts to stick. At the end of the day, Ferry does make the surface slippery, but the very moment when our object begins to bog down in any given spot, it sticks in place. It's hard to say what will happen inside an engine. Is it gonna run just fine, or not so much? Who even knows? And now it's gliding. So you do have some kind of film forming. And so... Let's go ahead and pour that ferry into the motor and see how well it cleans the internals. 900 milliliters. That's fine. We need a total of 3 liters. We can pour three bottles in there without even a second thought. Things are looking pretty amazing. Right on the maximum mark. The engine is having a hard time. It is not feeling good. What's that? The oil pressure light is flickering. The pressure light is on. Oh, we've got foam. What's happening? Did you shut it off? Yeah. What for? You would have just seen a massive amount of foam escaping through the oil filler hole. Also, look at the... And isn't that just lovely? I know what happened. Anybody want to guess? Oh my, we've got foam. We've got a ton of foam in here. So it even cleaned out the carburetor. Great stuff. I was just thinking about removing it. And then it starts to bubble. So here's what's happening. We washed the carby. We had a foam party in there, I guess you can call it. Let's try starting the motor. Oh, that is just wonderful. We should collect it, I guess. Anybody need foam? It's some pretty nice foam. I think you could even use it to wash your dishes. The engine is going to be very clean. What an amazing story we are witnessing. It is getting hot, like really hot. Yeah, let's clean it on the outside too. Don't let it get into the carby. Just clean the engine bay and everything in it. Now this, I gather, I had to point it that way. Now this should help. I mean clean the engine bay, not the internals. Immediately it stalls. <laughs> so that's the story with the foam. Okay, now we've reached operating level. I barely see anything coming out. So in theory we got all of this right, yeah? 
We were doing everything by the book and so the engine has to be nice and shiny inside. Though I do suspect that it'll only be shiny on the outside. There we are. Even if you look right here, you can see water coming out. The engine has been running for quite a while. And now even the exhaust gases smell like berry. It's not just lemon even. It's as if it was all burned and charred. Turn it off. And now the moment of truth. Let's look and see what we've accomplished. This looks pretty good. Not to say that it's all good. This is curious. It's pretty underwhelming. If we were to take some fairy, mix it with a bit of water and start cleaning all of this with a brush, I'm pretty sure we would be able to clean everything off. But I mean, simply pouring it into the engine... Well, you can plainly tell that... It simply doesn't work. Complete and utter horseshit. Now, anybody who knows how these things work or has even just observed the process, knows full well that when motor oil expires, resulting in the engine producing noise, like coming from the hydraulic tappets, especially if they're old, the point is that all you have to do is replace the oil, no matter the engine, and it just starts to feel good. As if thanking you for pouring in some fresh oil. It runs nice and smooth. Well, unless it's within an inch of its life, of course. And it has no place other than the garbage can. If the engine is in proper working condition, after an oil change it almost feels as if it's gleeful. It'll run nicely on some fresh oil, spin easily. So even something as simple as replacing your oil goes a long way in terms of how the engine operates. Adding a bottle of fairy, on the other hand, that's complete hogwash. That's all I have for you fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in your comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget that we've got merch. New t-shirts, you'll find the links down below. That's all I got, catch you guys later.